I think one of the most important things that's likely to happen if you're not in the immediate vicinity of an of attack is to suddenly get worried about loved ones and, geez, and want to reach out to them. If the communication systems are down, then it tends to maybe to run off to your car and try to get there. The transportation systems, particularly in an urban area, are likely to be very disrupted. The best thing that people can do really is to stay put, and that's why institutions should also work to make sure that there is the ability for them to stay put and both in terms of basic needs, but also communications needs, backup radios or other kinds of things, so folks can get informed, so again, you're not contributing to the chaos. What we've done here at the Council is build on our existing safety and security procedures. All of our staff has been instructed on what to do in the event of an emergency, from how to report one, to evacuating the building safely, where we would meet outside, instructions on when it is time to return into the building, uh, we have a management plan in place which basically puts all of the key departments together to plan uh, not only for emergencies but also how to react if a particular emergency occurs. We all have individual roles even though we're, we're acting as a group. Each department has a specific duty that they fulfill as part of the larger plan. There are some general building safety and security procedures that you should ensure are operational your fire suppression and detection systems. It's very important to make sure that they're online and operational. Fire extinguishers. It's very, very important that the fire extinguishers have a full charge and that they're checked regularly. Your HVAC systems. It's very important that all your maintenance personnel understand and know how to shut these systems down if, if, if necessary. And we would want to shut systems down if we're instructed or advised to shut them down. We basically want to limit the amount of outside air that we're taking in. The filtration system, the filtration media that you have inside of your HVAC, HVAC systems is also very important. You should be using HEPA type filters. HEPA filters are high efficiency particulate air filters and what they do is basically block minute, minuscule, microscopic particulates from entering into your fresh air intake system. It's important that you check all of your emergency lighting systems to make sure that the batteries in the systems are fully charged and that any automatic transfer switches that you may have that basically put them over to battery operation if you have electrical failure are working and working properly. These things need to be tested. It's very, very crucial. We also have mailroom security procedures in place and what we're doing is using the guidelines set up by the Postal Service for detecting or recognizing suspicious mail and packages. In the event of an emergency, it's very important that your response personnel, your, your emergency evacuation team, your emergency personnel team can communicate with one another. We accomplish that here at the council by using battery-operated two-way radios. It allows us to talk to each other prior to, during, and after an event. We've been instructed if disaster strikes to basically shelter in place unless we're instructed otherwise. And we need to be prepared to shelter in place. And we're also thinking, we're also realizing that it's not just our own staff that we need to be concerned with. We also need to take into consideration any guests that we may have. The type of organization that we have, we, we hold a lot of meetings and, 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 and large functions where the amount of folks that are actually in our building could be three times the size of our staff, so we need to be just as prepared to take care of our guests as our, as our staff. The gas mask and dust mask, when it was first announced, the, really the guidelines weren't very clear. As time developed, we realized, or we were given the information, I should say, that what we're, at, what we're trying to do is not to prevent ourselves from inhaling gases. It's impossible to prepare for that. You, you just don't know what sort of agent would be used and the filters that you use are, are key to keeping them out of your, your system. What's been recommended is an N95 dust mask. Uh, they, generally are, uh, they generally have a little metal nose bridge that allows you to clamp it over your nose for a snug, secure fit. And they generally have two, two bands that go at the bottom and above your ears. And the idea is that you want to keep particulates out of your respiratory system. And these particulates are not necessarily biological agents. If, if there is a disaster and a building collapses, that's going to create a lot of dust, a lot of dust and it's going to help you survive, it's going to help you breathe, it's going to make getting to your relocation site or, or any general mobility a lot easier. What we've done basically is prepare an emergency kit for 
staff and guests. And the emergency kit mirrors what somebody should have for, their, for themselves and their families. The kits include water, it inclu includes food, non-perishable type food, it includes flashlights, it includes whistles. It really mirrors the plan that one should have for their, for their family. We've also assembled to-go kits, the same sort of kits that folks should have readily available if they're asked to leave. If you need to evacuate your home or if you're asked to shelter in place, it's important to have a disaster supply kit. This kit should last you three days and should have enough items in it that are not going to require special preparation, electricity, and I'm going to talk about what's in that list in a moment. But it's also important to remember that you're preparing this kit not just to deal with an actual disaster. There could be lots of disruptions. ATM systems can go down, telephone systems can go down, power systems can go down, and we need to be as prepared as possible so that we can stay informed. I'd like to talk about a few of those items now. A battery-powered radio with backup batteries or a battery-powered television with backup batteries will help you stay in communication and get official word on what you should be doing. A flashlight with, special, with backup batteries. Special need items as, such as medicines, eyeglasses, contact lenses. A first aid kit, and it's very important that you check the contents of the first aid kit to number one, make sure that everything's in there, and also check the expiration dates. You don't want to have medicines that have expired and are, are, are no longer any good. A change of clothing, and your change of clothing should also include wet weather gear and, and comfortable shoes. Food. It's important that you select food that is not going to require a lot of preparation. Ideally, no heat and no water that would be used in its preparation. And if you're going to store canned goods, uh, make sure you have a can opener. You need the tools to be able to open up some of the food that you, you decide to have on hand. It should be non-perishable. Water. It's important that we have one gallon per person per day. And this water is going to be used not just for drinking, but also for sanitation. A sleeping bag, a sleeping roll are adequate blankets. You have to remember, this is not just if you're going to be sheltering in place, but if you're asked to relocate. Copies of important family documents. Now, it's important that you keep these documents in an airtight, waterproof bag. And if you can, scan them onto a disk. Cash. It's important to remember that banking systems can go down and you may not be able to get to your cash, so make sure you have enough cash on hand. Sanitation supplies such as soap, toilet tissues, disinfectant. You should also have bleach on hand as well as a general disinfectant. A whistle, an extra set of car keys and a full tank of gas. Make sure your cell phone is fully charged. And anything that you'd like to add to this list, anything that's going to improve your comfort, uh, improve your safety, this is just a very basic list.